All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of our Guild Wars 1 playthrough. Today we are in Elona Reach, our first Crystal Desert mission. And uh, we had the pleasure of running it again unexpectedly with our good friend and premier Guild Wars content creator, Guild Wars Mod. If you have not checked out his channel, I don't know what you're doing uh, watching this channel <laughs> and not watching his. So I'm assuming you're, you're, if you're watching this channel, you're probably already subscribed to his. But either way, give it a like and subscribe if you've not done that. Actually, today's episode is going to be a little different because I uh, <laughs> failed to check if my audio was recording or not when I ran this mission. So I was talking to myself and failed to record it, but it's okay. We're going to do a voiceover over on this. I kind of like it better. We'll see if I keep it this way. Doing a voiceover over my playing is um, a little bit more relaxing. Uh, if you look at my skill bar, I changed it up a bit for this mission. I went through a couple variations because we actually failed a couple times doing this. And I ended up settling on this domination uh, skill bar. We had we had some really good skill recommendations by our good commenter friend Tar Heel. And we yeah, took some of his advice, we mixed it up a little bit, but we decided to go with... I keep using we, but I decided to go with uh, a more of a counter build to counter all of the healing that, uh, that you're going to see up coming up here. We're going to be fighting for the first time very balanced party, or very balanced enemy parties. There's going to be melee mixed with some... Uh, support necromancers and healers very very tough to go up against at this stage of the mission plus they all have elite skills which we have zero elite skills in our party including the henchmen um, so it's a, again a huge huge difficulty uh, increase yeah we're running some some new skills that we haven't run before or is this diversion skill it's a pretty cool spell that's going to be useful against the AI. I noticed this mission, whenever I cast Diversion on the casters, they typically, you know, if they cast a spell, that's great because it, it activates correctly. But one thing I noticed is when I cast Diversion is they actually refrain from using any skills. So that's also a win. For six seconds, they don't use any skills. It's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, our skill bar is definitely more of a counter to the casters, but it also has some interrupts and some uh, empathy for anti, you know, melee, anti-ranger enemies. I think it worked out. It ended up working out best. I don't know if I'm going to keep this skill bar for future missions. Probably will because we're fighting the same enemies, right? But... One thing I am going to bring next is a Signet of Capture. Uh, I missed out on a chance, you're going to see coming up, I missed out on a chance to get a uh, Elite skill. Being that this is our third attempt at this, we got pretty good at running uh, optimal routes to avoid as many enemies as possible. Generally wall hugging, uh, you know, Aggroing, pulling, kiting. Begins the test of the Elonians. This all good strategies. Failed to ascend. When assembled, the vision crystal can focus the gaze of the gods and deliver to you the ascension that you seek. You've brought me the first shard, but you must still retrieve the others. Ultimately, it was greed that was our undoing. The shards of the Vision Crystal were kept in separate camps, for we did not trust each other, not even our own kin. To pass this test, you must... 
must retrieve the remaining two shards. There is one in each base. Return here with the shards, and I will cast the ritual to fuse them back together. But you must hurry. Once the ritual begins, it cannot be stopped. If I do not have all three pieces, then all of this will be for naught. That voice actor was crazy. Super raspy. You probably heard his voice doing that. Um, one, one thing that we noted that uh, you'll notice is this mission to make matters worse, it is actually timed. So while you are in order to in order to successfully pull off this mission you need to be really careful with you know which enemies you aggro and not over aggroing and being careful you're also you can't take too much time because there's a, a time limit but i think yeah like i said this is our third attempt we get we're pretty good at at finding out where we need to be standing, where we need to be aggroing. So yeah, immediately you see I'm targeting the Sage. Sage are the really annoying healers of these snake people. And they have an elite skill, word of healing, that just is like overheal. It's very difficult to counter. And I have a hard time interrupting it. So diversion is also I noticed diversion is really great for human players because it you know you don't I don't need to worry so much about interrupting and finding the time I just cast diversion and then like for 40 seconds they can't use a skill or that skill that that I used it on first mob down very optimistic here. We have been um, double aggroing these groups and just whenever, you, whenever you're going up against two healers, those double sages with two word of healing, it's just, it's impossible to out damage their, their healing ability. And the way, the way the developers made the AI in this is they're, they're just like, they balanced they balance the AI or the enemies always with the skills that they uh, equipped and the level. They didn't balance do any balancing on the AI, like the actual the actions that they take. It seems like they're they're just they use their skills so optimally that it's <laughs> it's really hard to compete against their healing timings and and uh, interrupt timings. That's what I'm complaining about here. I'm too slow. I don't know if we did this intentionally or not, but clearing this group first ended up being a really good idea, even though we don't have a crystal here to activate the bonus. It um it can, it, it ended up working out really well cuz we needed to come back this way with the crystal later. Another good thing about this mission is there are several bundles that you can go through. There's like those mines that you can pick up to clear them. Uh, and also the crystals themselves. So having another player helps a lot because you can share that burden, so to speak. Those mines are also really annoying because they cat. It's it's like a spike trap it bleeds you it cripples you and it's aoe so your whole party can get crippled and it's just designed to slow you down of course so it's a good idea to go through and pick them up and disable them which i should i should have done here and i don't looking back at it now i definitely should have disabled this Yeah, 
Yeah, so these these bosses are, I believe, random spawns. Every every profession profession has a boss that con that is spawned in this in this mission randomly. So if you do bring a signet of capture and your boss, your your profession's boss does not appear, you just need to reload it because it's a random spawn. Custodian Delis. Yeah, see, you see me casting diversion on him, and he's just running around, not casting, not using any skills. It's kind of interesting. Just auto attacking. I ran into some energy management issues against enemies that don't use spells because all of my energy gain comes from whether I or not I can successfully interrupt a spell specifically. Yeah, so we just decided to go back the same way way that we came. Every crystal you get, you got to go back to the ghostly hero. But once you grab a crystal, more enemies spawn in your way. So you got to be you got to be mindful of keep your eye on the compass in the top right to to see where their uh, patrol patterns go. Yeah, these little mobs are not too bad, the ones that come up. It's kind of those necromancers actually have a nice teleporting skill. I didn't realize I thought the only profession that had teleporting skills were the assassins. But that necromancer kind of jumps around by consuming corpse, teleports to the nearest corpse. Okay, so here what I should have done, I was pinging because we needed to get the crystal. You need the crystal to activate the bonus and uh I think we both got confused here, actually. Yeah, whenever it's just like three, a few groups of enemies, these are just here to slow you down. They're not really any danger of wiping you out. I think the other thing we noticed is, uh, you know, our teammate, he had been running poison and bleed in conditions, and these, those custodians, those, uh, those, uh, ranger enemies and warrior enemies, I don't think they're susceptible to any conditions like poison or bleed. So yeah, we're both a little confused here. We run back to see if we can activate that bonus, um, but no, in fact, you need the crystal. It's something we learned. I'll edit, I'll edit that out, the little backtracking here to save time. Yeah, we so we uh, backtracked to check the bonus. Could not, in fact, do the bonus yet. We need to get another crystal. So we head south to get the final crystal. There's a lot of different routes you can take. Finding the best route is just kind of based on the patrols that you can see the enemies moving. They cover a huge area. Which is also kind of new to the missions. Usually the enemies are following kind of a very predictable and small 
route, but in this mission they they speed up, they slow down, they go across the map randomly, seemingly randomly. They do have a they do have a path, but still. We run into a huge issue here of over aggroing. We get really lucky and unlucky at the same time. It's really unlucky unlucky that we got the a monk boss because they react to injured enemies. So even though here we aggro this small group thinking we pulled far enough away, it's still in range. Yeah, you can see the boss move forward there. It's still in range of the boss's sight. So he runs up to assist to heal them. Even though we're not in battle with the boss, he's... He's, uh saving all of his enemies so we have to try and disengage re-engage disengage very frustrating i'm gonna speed this up actually Yeah, so we disengaged successfully. We're gonna try again. Gotta stay way back whenever there's a monk enemy. Monk boss. We'll try and pull him, and then he's not having it. He's like, no, I don't wanna fight. This is a really, you get a really good elite as a monk player. The elite skill, word of healing that the monk is using, it's one of the best monk elites in, or healing elites in the whole game. We cleared the way. It's just us and the boss now standing in the way of our last vision crystal. We're kind of just that's one that's the other thing is when you're focusing on interrupt, it's really hard to multitask. So here I'm just kind of standing there, my eyes at the top of the screen looking at the skill. Okay, waiting for the skill, waiting for the interrupt. Like at one point, I'm not even attacking anyone. I'm just standing there doing nothing. I'm sure he was wondering, okay, what are you doing? But like, Just a few more of these mobs. Start getting nervous around this time because it's getting close to the 10 minute mark. And it just feels like the time is flying by at this point. But like I said before, you have to kind of ignore the time remaining, even though it causes stress. Because if you if you pay too much attention to it, you're just gonna you're gonna rush and bite off a little bit too much than you can chew. Yeah, that's really the last, that's really the last difficult uh, mob here. There is another, there is another boss coming up. We're debating whether or not we want to take on that elementalist boss to our left. We decide against it because we're just like, 
Let's just get this over with. I decided to put Backfire on the Elementalist and then focus on Interrupts on the Sage. That's another way to to do it because without conflicting. So like I'm, I got two or three Backfire ticks off while I was dealing with that healer. Can't remember if I mentioned it, but yeah, we had we decided to have our <laughs> our teammate lead the party so that the henchmen follow his orders rather than mine, so that I'm free to switch targets. Because if I switch a target, the henchmen follow my attacks, and then it ends up being very inefficient. I noticed I was I was kind of being careful about this boss fight, but then I noticed there's no healers. So essentially it's just a matter of interrupting, out damaging, bursting down as fast as possible. A couple good chaos storms. That's a lot of damage right there if you add all that up. It's pretty close to like a thousand damage. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why they don't do much running around. They kind of just stood for the full length, the full duration of that Chaos Storm. It's massive damage that way. Alright, we're at the 10 minute mark. We have the last crystal. And we're kind of debating, okay, should we just finish the mission or should we go ahead and try and do the bonus? At this point, I'm I'm kind of just like, yeah, let's not do the bonus. Let's just finish it. This being our third attempt. It's really annoying the the way that the collision works on the some of these map textures. It looks like you can just cut the corner right there, but then you actually can't. You have to go wide around it. Yeah, so like the I'm circling where these new mobs popped up. Yeah, no sages, so basically just attack whoever you can kill the fastest. I wanted to focus down the elementalist because they're squishier than this warrior. Really had a lot of mana issues if I didn't get any interrupts off. So this is the last part of the bonus. Really easy to miss if you decide not to go this back way. But luckily, we turned down this way. And he almost missed it. He almost walked right past it, so I had the ping. So we talk to him, and we decide, okay, let's go ahead and finish the bonus here, because we have eight and a half minutes. I think we're good. Worse comes worse. We just need to make a run to the ghostly hero. Yeah, so deactivating that splinter mine, that was kind of my idea there, is we're, we're running ahead of the crystal bearer, our teammate. So I just thought, let's take out that, that splinter mine to make the way a little bit faster for him, clear the way a little bit for him. At this point, yeah, we're getting really excited. We're definitely going to complete the mission. We got this far. There's no enemies between us and the ghostly hero. Just got to get the last, this is our last bonus. And we complete it right here. It's funny, it's like the first bonus we've completed in like 10 missions. Very excited. And we're very close to, after finishing this mission, we're very close to level 19. Safe to say that by the time we finish the Crystal Desert, we will be level 20. Come a long way. Again, thanks again for everyone 
or anyone who's been following since the beginning. But yeah, at any point, if you've tuned into a video, huge thanks. I think it's a fun, nostalgic playthrough of this game. Really learned a lot about it, re-experienced a lot about it. I'm going to make a recap video, I think, um, when we finish Prophecies. Kind of recapping all of my feelings and experience through this playthrough. So this is it. This is the last bit. Six and a half minutes uh, to spare. Very nice. The vision crystal is complete. Your day of judgment at augury. Took a quick, quick screenshot here. Alright, that's it. We did it. Full bonus or full mission. And that brings us back to Augury. So uh, when you finish the when you finish each of the desert missions, it takes you back to Augury Rock because once we finish the all three we can ascend. But yeah. GG everyone. Thanks for watching. When we come back, we are going to be running either Yeah, we're gonna be running Thirsty River next, I believe. We need to get we need to get there uh, this Sunday. I think by the time this comes out, I'm gonna upload this Saturday. So yeah, Sunday we're gonna be doing Thirsty River. That's where you see me next. Anyway, good job everyone. Catch you guys next time. Uh, thanks again. Peace.